Hey, this is Aaron Rubinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Today I'm going to talk about Gridiron Nucleo Pro, a plugin for After Effects that not only speeds up RAM previews and renders, but also gives you access to some powerful workflow tools to help you work better in After Effects. Some of you may already have experience with the original Gridiron Nucleo, or if you're President Bush, Gridiron Nucleo, which is a plugin for After Effects that speeds up RAM previews and renders. The features in Gridiron Nucleo are also included in Nucleo Pro, so let's talk about those features first. When you have a dual processor system or a dual core chip or better, if you do a RAM preview or render, After Effects will not use the full power of the processor. In fact, the more processing power you have, the less return you'll get on your investment, at least with regard to After Effects. The reason for that is all very scientific and I would love to explain it to you, but I have no idea how it works. But to put things in perspective, for example, on this dual processor machine, we get 80 to 90% utilization. But on this quad, we get about 60%. I've also worked with this project on a four dual core processor machine and gotten only 30 to 40% utilization. That's specific to this particular project, by the way, and the numbers vary greatly based on the nature of your compositions. But when you get down to it, Nucleo, whether rendering or RAM previewing, will give you 100% processing power. And it does this by running multiple instances of After Effects in the background. How many instances depends on how many processors you have available. In essence, it treats your single computer with multiple processors like a render farm, without any of the complications you'd normally have from working over multiple machines. Getting fast RAM previews is as simple as pressing Shift and the spacebar on your keyboard. As soon as you do that, a dialog pops up to let you know that Nucleo is working and you can see your RAM cache building in the timeline as well. Rendering is also as simple as hitting the Render button. You can tell Nucleo to use either the standard After Effects renderer, Nucleo's Fast Render, or Nucleo Pro's Background Render, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Your choice down here will decide how the After Effects Render button behaves, and you can always change it as needed. Take note that no matter what option you choose, you're always using the After Effects Render Engine. This is not some hidden third-party render engine in the background. This is, again, multiple instances of After Effects, which means that your render will look exactly as it does here in the comp window with no hidden surprises. Now, as far as Nucleo Pro features go, let's start off by talking about a cool feature called Spec Preview. If you hate waiting for a RAM preview, and who doesn't, this feature is one you'll be using a lot. In essence, Spec Preview is constantly checking to see if anything has changed in your composition, and if so, caches the changes, meaning it runs a RAM preview in the background. And while those changes are being cached, you can still move on to other frames and make even more changes. The end result is considerably less or no waiting time for a RAM preview since it's already been mostly cached. Just hitting zero, as usual, will play back the RAM preview. On the same side of that coin, you also have a tool called Spec Render, which will cache the frames of your composition and begin to render them in the background. If you make a change, Nucleo Pro will stop the render, recache those new frames, and then begin to re-render in the background. Now, this re-rendering is not nearly as intensive as a normal After Effects render because, in this case, it's rendering from cached images, not starting from scratch, and then reanimating each frame, which means both a much faster renderer and the freedom for you to continue to work on the same project without feeling a hit to system performance. Please note that after you stop a spec render by making changes, it may take a little while for Nucleo Pro to restart the spec render again. But in most cases, you'll be in for a much faster render this way, as compared to a normal render, which isn't built off of your RAM cache. In fact, if you decide not to make a change you were thinking about making, you could end up with your completed render before you even realize you need it. Caching images is great and all, but sometimes even with Nucleo Pro, it can still take a long time. One of the biggest problems I face is that when I make a minor change to a heavy project, I have to re-RAM preview everything meaning that I have to spend a lot of time waiting for almost the exact same preview. Ultimately, it's this sort of thing that makes us content providers cut corners because a minor change that takes a long time to update, view, and render is the same thing as a major change, at least as far as making your deadline is concerned. The less time you have, the less work you can do. But Nucleo Pro comes with a feature called Commit to Disk, which will allow you to select any layers you don't plan on changing and replace them non-destructively with a video. So in this example, these birds represent about 150 3D layers, each with motion blur and with some effects added into the mix. I can select these layers and use the commit to disk command, which tells After Effects to render these layers in the background. 
As you can see, these layers become locked so that I can't mess with them, and a new commit in progress layer is added in. This will be the video that replaces the offending layers. And while this is happening, I can continue to work on my composition or project, making whatever changes I need to make. So I'll just change this to, say, Time Magazine. Hey, I don't want to get sued. Also, I'll make this border red by going into the stroke effect and making a minor change. Anyway, when it's done committing to disk, the video is dropped in and our original layers are still there, but their eyeball switch is turned off, making them invisible. And they're also shy layers, so we can use the shy switch to hide them. The beauty of this is that now I get a much faster RAM preview each time. Also, if I committed a layer to disk that had any other layers dependent on it, such as the rotation of these green squares which are linked to this red one via an expression, even when I commit this red square animation to disk, those dependencies are still in place because the red square layer has not been deleted. It's just not visible, which doesn't have any adverse effects on parenting or expressions. But jumping back into that birds project, if I decide I want to make changes to the layers I've already committed to disk, it's no big deal. Just delete the video and make the originals visible again, and of course unlock them. Now once I'm satisfied with this composition and I'm ready to render, I'm usually stuck with one of two options. Either render now and take a long break, or work on the next project and batch render everything overnight. Well, times are changing. As I mentioned earlier, one of the render options is Nucleo Pro's background render. By selecting this option, when I hit render, Nucleo will begin to render whatever's in the render queue, but it'll do it in the background. That gives me the ability to open another composition or project and work on that, with no hit to After Effects' normal performance. Remember, After Effects doesn't use all the resources on your CPU, and Nucleo won't hog the resources. It will give the active After Effects window whatever it needs to get the job done. You can even do a standard RAM preview while Nucleo is rendering in the background. Granted, you won't be able to use any of Nucleo Pro's other features while you run that background render, but you can still use After Effects as you normally would. So those are the major features of Nucleo Pro 1.0, which I think are awesome, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the bad. There are a few things that are minorly annoying and a few things that are actual issues to consider. First, the annoying stuff. For starters, since Nucleo Pro is working off of several instances of After Effects, as a result, when you use Nucleo for a RAM preview or render, you can't see the frames being cached or rendered as you normally would. So you either have to wait until it finishes, or stop it and play back what you have. Also, the time indicator for how long your render will take is often wrong. This is not a limitation of Nucleo, however. After Effects guesses how long the composition will take to render based on previous frames rendered, and if it's light stuff at the beginning but heavy at the end, the numbers will come in low. In other words, it will take longer than it says at first. On the flip side, if the animation is more complex at the beginning and simple at the end, then it will say that it's going to take longer than it actually does. Nucleo Pro works and reports time left in the same way. Also, You'll notice that during a fast render, Nucleo doesn't tell me the name of the comp currently being rendered, or for that matter, give me any real indication of how many files it has left to render. That bugs me. Finally, there's a bug with spec preview where if you're typing, Nucleo doesn't notice that you're changing anything and tries to cache the frames, which cuts you out of being able to change the text. However, if you're going to be editing text, you can temporarily disable spec preview by hitting control and the spacebar, and when you're done, use the same keyboard command to re-enable it. This is going to have to be a learned habit, but not one that I can't accept. That said, there are two big issues you need to keep in mind when deciding if Nucleo Pro will work for you. The first is that Nucleo is designed for either a dual-core processor or machine with more than one CPU. If you're on a single processor, Nucleo will not work, and Nucleo Pro, while still having some tools enabled, is not really for you. At least that's my opinion. On the other hand, the more processors you have, the more of a performance increase you'll see. The major issue with Nucleo and Nucleo Pro is that if it were Superman, then Illustrator art would be its kryptonite. You see, After Effects has to rasterize the Illustrator art, which causes an increase of overhead even without Nucleo. This has always been a problem. Now this rasterization problem is an After Effects issue and not a Nucleo issue, but Nucleo magnifies it a lot. So if it's a simple project with a lot of Illustrator art, then Nucleo may not be worth using because you'll probably see a render hit. But if it's a complex project with a lot more than Illustrator art, it's probably still worth rendering with Nucleo. Are any of these issues deal breakers? Absolutely not. 
No software is perfect, but in most situations, Nucleo Pro comes close to a perfect solution to the very difficult problem of increasing render speed and improving workflow, with only a few glitches here and there. Okay, so to sum up, there are many plugins out there that create really cool effects, and some that are not really all that great at all. But when you get down to it, aside from animators who want to take long lunch breaks, I can't think of anyone who doesn't want to work faster or better and have less downtime in After Effects, and a plugin that can do that is well worth Nucleo Pro's price tag of $495. Nucleo, by the way, is still available for $149. If you're not convinced that this is the solution for you, you can download a trial of Nucleo Pro at gridironsoftware.com. And if you want to test it with the same files that I used, you can grab them at www.creativecow.net forward slash AE podcast. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.